What's good people, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash the like, hit the bell, those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload, so just make sure you hit that bell. Anyway guys, today we got a dope episode for you because it's all about four steps that you need to do when it comes to super soil because a lot of people are moving toward the super soil movement and that's super important because a lot of people know how important it is to feed your plants and you can do it organically through super soil. So creating a rich substrate for your plants takes a little work up front but in the long run it can provide you with a thriving garden that doesn't need your constant attention right mixing up nutrients every day it's not fun it's not easy and it can be a little bit time consuming right so in today's episode we're going to get into all that stuff so you can grow some fat thick nice flowers but before we get into that guys just want to say thank you to everyone that sent their well wishes while i was in the hospital and i was recovering thank you guys so so much it really means a whole lot those abdominal pains man i never want to see the inside of a hospital again that's all i'm gonna say and massive big ups to everyone that's supporting us on patreon man if you guys aren't on patreon join up with the i can fam man join up with the i can vip bean club fam man because we got a lot of free stuff going out out there to everyone man yesterday we actually packaged up a ton of boxes to go out so if you want to gold box and some awesome perks and definitely join up without further ado guys let's get into today's episode Yes guys, now there are two ways that you can feed your plants. You can either feed your plants or you can build your soil. You can buy bottles of fertilizer with cool labels that look friggin cool and you mix up that nutrient solution for your plants or you can build a healthy soil that will feed your plants every single time you water. Now both ways work and there are pros and cons to each method. So in today's episode, I'm gonna break all that down. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have started at the bottle or at least used the bottle at some point in your life. Now bottle fertilizers can be expensive and you usually have to end up investing in an entire line of nutrients that needs to be purchased again and again and again. You literally got to take the time to measure and mix them properly every single feed, otherwise your PPM and pH can go out of whack. Bruh. Now those fertilizers are usually full of salt, so you'll need to flush your plants on a regular basis. At least that's what some growers do sometimes. Now I know flushing is super controversial, we're not going to get into it today, so let's stick to what we came here for. Now all in all, bottle fertilizers do a great job, but they also create a lot more work throughout your garden's life right? But when you build up your soil, on the other hand, you put in the work up front to create a rich substrate that can sustain your plants through the entire life cycle. And then all you got to do is water. No mixing nutrients, no worrying about pH or PPM levels, and no flushing. Perfect. You heard that, right? So this super soil stuff, Matt, how do I get into the super soil? What exactly is the super soil? Well, I'm going to take you back to 2009. Probably the most well-known and effective soil for your plants first popped up around then. It was back then that the late Subcool, RIP to Subcool, a famous breeder and enthusiast released a super soil recipe in an issue of High Times. The recipe quickly took off with hobby growers, and the results were friggin' undeniable, man. Mwah, fantastic results. Now, since then, there have been a variety of super soil recipes floating around and passed between growers. A lot of growers add their own spins to it, but the general idea behind creating your own super soil is to add enough quality amendments to a soil base to feed your plants throughout their life cycle, then compost the mixture for up to six months to a year before using it in your garden. This way, the soil and amendments have a chance to break down so that the nutrients are readily available to your plants. The soil will feed your plants exactly what they need without you having to worry about adding more nutrients or adjusting pH. All you gotta do is add water. And that's my, that's my kind of thing, guys. I love simple. K-I-S-S. -S, kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. And I'm a hella stupid guy when it comes to the garden. Now, super soil can be used indoors or outdoors with excellent results and is completely organic. It's as close to nature as you can get in an indoor grow room and gives your flowers a delicious flavor and smooth finish. Pro tip guys, don't start seedlings directly in a super soil because it might burn them. Start your plants in a soil less or less nutrient dense mix and then transplant into the super soil once they're a few weeks old. So now that you know all about the super soil, I'm going to tell you how to mix it up. Step 1. You gotta mix your base. When building a super soil, you need to start with a base soil. You can buy bags of organic potting mix or you can make your own. The ingredients and the nutrient profile of your base mix will determine which amendments and how much of them you need to add next. If you're making your own soil base, it may be worth getting it tested at a soil lab so you know exactly what's in that nutrient profile and you can choose your own amendments accordingly. Now there are many different soil recipes out there but a general rule of thumb is to mix one or two parts compost 
one part coco core or peat moss and one part perlite i'm a huge fan of perlite and i've just started using coco a whole lot more make sure to mix them up thoroughly you can use a tarpaulin or a kiddie pool those make great containers for mixing soil this combination gives you a fluffy rich base to build upon and you can really get in there and mix it all up and get in there nice now step two you gotta add amendments when you feed your plants from a bottle you need to mix specific ratios of npk during different stages of development but when you feed your plants through soil, you just need to make sure the soil has enough nutrients to feed your plants during their lifetime. Plants need nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and tons of micronutrients that your soil needs, so make sure that your soil contains all of these things. Nitrogen-rich amendments include worm castings, crustacean meal, chicken manure, blood meal, neem seed meal, bat guano, damn there's so many meals. Phosphorus-rich amendments contain stuff like crustacean meal, bat guano, chicken manure, bone meal, and rock dust. Potassium-rich amendments include worm castings, azomite, green sand, kelp meal, and wood ash. So you guys would have probably noticed that there are a few things that you can use throughout. That worm castings, excellent. Kelp, excellent. Lobster crab shell, excellent. And Neptune's Harvest has got you covered. So definitely check out Neptune's Harvest range of dry organic and liquid organic amendments and definitely thank me later. Discount code ICANTH2 will snag you a few bucks as well. Don't, don't miss out on that. Now step three, you want to establish a fungal and bacterial population. Now this one is super important guys because key to the nutrient uptake and absorption is making sure that your soil has established fungal and bacterial colonies. Those microbes break down the nutrients into forms that your plants can actually uptake and use. They also protect your plants from disease. If you're growing in the ground outdoors, beneficial fungi will create an underground network with all sorts of telephone conversations going on with each other. I'm just joking about the telephone conversations guys. But that underground network will bring nutrients to your plants from miles away. I'm talking super far. Lots of those organic amendments that I've listed earlier will help with this such as the compost, worm castings, bat guano, kelp, and the crab and lobster shell. Now you can also grab mycorrhizal inoculants. I love using using Dynomyco, and these powders are dormant microbes that are reactivated in the soil when watered. The sooner that you establish these mycorrhizal colonies, the larger they will become and the more, more helpful they will be towards your plants. And huge shout out to Dynomyco, we're actually going to be out of the Emerald Cup, kicking it with them at the booth, so come check us if you're going to be down there, man. Now step four, compost. Now this one is not always necessary, but it can be super helpful in terms of a great step to use. Once your soil is mixed thoroughly, you can add some water and let it sit and bake in the sun for a couple months some people don't got that time i know but but hear me out hear me out the times can vary because some people let it sit for 30 to 60 days other people recommend six months to a year basically the longer you let it sit the more it'll break down and the more available the nutrients will be to your plants so if you have the time just let it sit for a bit you can put your super soil in a clean garbage can with a lid and let them sit outside in a sunny location add enough water so that your soil is moist but not wet because that will help to activate the microbes but if it's dry it will dry them out if it's wet that can cause issues as well. Be sure not to use water that has chlorine in it, which is common in city water. That will kill your microbes and totally defeat the purpose of making your own soil. If you're on city water, you can set a bucket of water out overnight and let the chlorine evaporate before using it. Trust me, I do that all the time and it helps. Now drop it in the comments down below and let me know if you do the composting part or if you just mix up your super soil and let the plants run. Personally, I've done it both ways and I've had good results with both ways. Now if you're looking for a great way to lighten up your gardening workload and grow organically, then building your super soil might be right for you. You can create your own super soil that will grow healthy, flavorful, potent, nice, beautiful flowers. And all you gotta do is add water, dude. Amazing, isn't it? So smash the like button for that. And don't forget to hit that bell. But wait, first. This video is brought to you by Mars Hydro, where they have a variety of grow lights and grow tents for growers of all experience levels. Whether you're a small home grower or setting up a slightly bigger commercial operation, they have the tents and lights for you. They have tents for every space and need, including the new two-in-one tents. And they also have a wide variety of lights to choose from, including full spectrum LED and the new detachable FCE series. Links to all of the products that we use on this channel, including the Mars Hydro Grow Lights, are in the description below. Be sure to use the links below to support the ICANN THC channel. You can also save a few bucks on the Mars Hydro website by using the code ICANTHC at checkout for store-wide savings. Don't forget to use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Now, back to the video. Check out this video right here, and this video right here, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace fam!